Hello everyone and welcome back, my name is Alex and this is a long awaited video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and I get a chance to do that and that is talking about laser ammunition here in EVE Online. EVE Online is a game that has a lot of ammunition choices and this can be pretty daunting for a new player. They look at all these types of ammunition even within the same class and say, well, which one do I use? You know, I see some that extend range, I see some that reduce capacitor usage, or I see some that does this and that, or if it's projectile ammunition that doesn't, of course, use any capacitor, but has several different damage types, or have several different characteristics. And so, for new players, when they come into EVE Online, ammunition selection is a very important topic, because if you go into a fight or you go into anything with the wrong type of ammunition, either A, you're not going to be as effective as you normally would be, or B, you're going to be in a pod, or worse yet, back into your home station in a very timely fashion. So right now, today, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in my hybrid ammunition video. I'm going to go through all the ammunition types uh, within the um, crystal class. Yeah within the frequency crystal class. And we're gonna go from one end to the other and explain what the ammunition does and what scenarios you may wanna consider uh, using that type of ammunition. Again, in a ship, you don't need to carry every single ammunition type and you shouldn't. You just need to bring what's effective for the situation and what may match your preferences or your play styles or your standoff a gunfighter are you gonna be up close melting their face well that's going to be different types of ammunition based on what your tactics tactics are going to be and what your situation is okay so anyways here i am yes i am in a caldari ship i am in my raptor because i just got my caldari character going right now but that's okay uh this is going to be pretty independent of the ship that i'm using because we're just going to be using the market window and we're going to go step by step through the frequency crystals and to see uh, which one does what. And yes, I also make comments on the tech two crystals and when you want to use those. Okay, so frequency crystals for all you Mar players. When it's time to burn the heretics, you need your crystal of choice. And before we we dive in here, uh, let's go through some just general notes on energy weapon usage and tactics. Okay. So I'm going to just jump into standard crystals here. I'm going to use the medium crystal sizes for cruisers and battle cruisers. As is kind of our frame of reference, so we don't jump around a whole lot. But again, everything is just scaled to the ship type. So, you know, frigates are going to have crystals that do a lot more less damage. But the variation within that spectrum for the frigate, it's going to be the same as it is for cruisers and, and battleships and so on and so forth. So, energy weapons have several advantages and disadvantages. Now, they are particularly prone to be on a Mars ship, so for good reason. The Mars ships are designed around energy weapons, while the other Empire ships typically do not. There are exceptions, you know, pirate ships and uh, sisters of these ships and things like that. But by and large, though, it will be the Amar Empire using this particular weapon type and this fits their lore and their play style so for the amar if you look at the ships on the whole yeah they are characterized by several things first of all they are the most armored ships in the game so they have very weak or on the weaker side shield systems at least on the tech one level and secondly, they are also characterized by the very large capacitors. Why? Because their capacitors are designed around the uses of, of energy weapons. Also, their tactics also reinforce the notion of energy transfer. If you look at their logistic ships, they also transfer energy back and forth to, in order to maintain that capacitor in order to fire the energy weapons. Yeah. So if we just go down to the ships here real quick, Let's just uh, take a look at what I was discussing here. So if we go to advanced cruisers, we go to logistics, we go to Mar, Guardian. So the Guardian, again, really brings out capacitor transmission. Yeah. And if you have a combined fleet composition, 
where the Guardian can utilize its capacitor transmission and its armor repair, you have a very solid fighting force. This is why fleet composition is so important inside any kind of corporate or empire organization. And it's hard to do because, of course, when you recruit, you're going to get anyone and everyone. So, and trying to get everyone to a common fleet doctrine is still today very, very difficult. Okay, but by and large, if it's going to be armored and it's going to be Amar, the Guardians and their Tech 1 equivalents are going to be in the fight because they're there and designed around the usage of energy weapons. So, energy weapons that are usually attached to Amar ships, and let's just go to the weapons here. If I can find it, and there's ship equipment. Okay, and we're going to go to turrets, and there's our energy turrets. And there are two classes, they are beam and pulse lasers. Pulse lasers are the shorter range weapons, those are the equivalent of blasters and autocannons. They are higher damage, uh, more rapid firing, but much shorter range. Beam lasers are the long range equivalent, i.e. the same as artillery for pro uh, projectile weapons and rail guns for the hybrid weapons. They are characterized by lower damage, but a significant longer range and yeah they, they fall in essentially the same same mode now one particular note about pulse lasers is that the pulse lasers pulse lasers do have the longest range of the short range weapons types so the pulse laser in comparison to auto cannons and blasters have a longer range than either of those two weapon systems so keep that in mind so pulse lasers with the right ammunition, which I'm going to discuss, can actually reach out to about medium range rather than being just restricted to short range. Now, with that being said, let's actually dive into the ammunition itself. The ammunition is going to determine what tactics you can use with these ships and these weapons when you're out in the field. Okay, so first we're going to start with standard crystals. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use medium uh, cruiser sized weapons as a baseline. And we're gonna go from there and as you can see there's one two three four five six seven and there's eight different types of crystals that you can load now for energy weapons they have a couple of characteristics which we need to go through right now first of all unlike rail guns and unlike hybrid weapons and projectile weapons the energy weapons can be fired indefinitely as long as they have the energy to fire them and this gives two advantages. The big advantage in combat is that you do not have to worry about reloading your weapon systems. There's not a finite amount of ammunition in the magazine or in the auto loader that you have to worry about depleting and then reloading in the middle of a gunfight. As long as the energy is there, you can keep firing. Another advantage, and this is more situation specific, is that you never have to worry about running out of ammunition. Now, this is usually not that big of a deal unless you're in a couple different scenarios. The first one is, of course, siege work. If you're out there destroying citadels or taking down towers with fewer are left out there and things like that, any kind of stationary target that you're going to be under extended siege with, energy weapons can tend to, to shine. You know, Because, again, as long as they have the energy, they can just keep firing, keep firing, keep firing. While as the siege goes longer, the ammunition consumption of other dreadnoughts or other battleships can become a concern. I've been in a few rare scenarios where ammunition started to get pretty low and we actually had to send someone out in an ammunition truck, grab whatever, come on back and you know keep filling up the, the dreadnoughts and whatever, or the battleships, uh, to keep things going. With the marships, you don't have to worry about that. You can just park it, fire away. Now the other type of characteristic that we have to be aware of when using energy weapons is that they are restricted to only two damage types electromagnetic damage and thermal damage so if I just open up let's say standard just open up here you will see that a standard for a medium class um, type of weapon has 10 EM damage and 6 thermal damage they will not do kinetic or explosive damage and then oh, that makes sense they are beams of light which means that energy weapons on the whole are more effective against shields than they are against armor but there's a lot that goes with that having been a 
and still am a Kaldari pilot myself, I can tell you that any kind of ship that's a shield base ship is going to plug the EM hole the very first thing they do. You know? So just because the energy weapon is designed against the shield's weaknesses, it does not mean you're going to cut through every shield ship in the game like a hot knife through butter. That is not going to happen. Okay. You're going to be firing against their main resistances that they're going to protect against. So that's the one thing to keep in mind. On the flip side, for armor ships, a lot of times EM armor, even though it's quite strong, I believe around 60%, uh, that's what that's a place that uh, most uh, armored fighting ships uh, tend to ignore. They don't plug that hole specifically. Now there will be resistances in increase in you know nano adaptive membranes and you know across spectrum lines of uh, of armor resistances, but usually not plugging that hole itself so sometimes there's a little bit of surprise that em damage can actually do more damage to an armor ship than a shield ship even though that's kind of counterintuitive because that is how people fit their ships thermal damage thermal damage as i explained in my hybrid video is on the whole the best normalized damage type in the game okay uh, they do good damage against shields and they do pretty good damage against the armor yeah so having good thermal damage is is always a benefit yeah now that doesn't mean that it can't be resisted uh, it can be because a lot of times when you take the stack up of both the shields and uh, the armor the overall resistance can be higher yeah also shield fighting ships uh, tend to use more than one at least one maybe more than one um, invulnerability shield which will also give increased resistance to the thermal but by and large against every other ship in the game if you don't know exactly what you're pre-fighting against unless there's a couple of edge cases such as a mar i'm sorry uh, minmintar tech 2 ships that are specifically resisted against this type of weapon uh, you're going to do fairly well yeah you're going to do fairly well it's it's good overall damage type when you're not exactly sure what you're going to be fighting against okay so em and thermal okay you're going to do pretty good against the shield ships and you're going to be a little bit weaker against armor ships but again it really does depend on how the opponent has structured their resistances okay uh, one last thing of course if you're doing pve uh, the rats you typically go up against in this case uh, blood raiders and sancha typically on a on a normal basis level if you're just doing normal missions are going to be weak to these type of damage okay but that's true against all the pirates against their respective weapon types it's it's kind of a game balancing thing when you go against uh, humans playing these pirate ships it's, it's going to be a very different story but if you're just doing normal missions and things like that you know this is the ammunition you might want to bring along okay now let's let's get started so let's jump back here and this is our overall list of standard ammunition okay so we're going to jump in here and i'm going to start with the longest range i'm going to try and go from range from the longest range as i did in the hybrid video and work down to the closest range and starting off with we have the radio now radio has overall a 60 percent increased in optimal range and a 15% reduced capacitor need. Now that's not bad, but the thing about the damage for radio is that it is entirely electromagnetic. Okay, you're not gonna get any thermal damage out of this whatsoever. So it can be particularly vulnerable against targets that are heavily shielded against EM damage. That being said though, uh, it does have the longest range, but that does not necessarily mean that it has uh, the best use for the capacitor. Yeah, 15% is not a lot, and with several sh uh, Mars ships not having that minus 50% capacity usage bonus, that's something I keep in mind. Yes, you will reach out very far and hit a target, but you will pay for that uh, mostly with your with your capacitor. Again, overall very good at hitting targets at a much larger longer range than they're than they're used to, and also picking off. Uh, ships at a very long distance but typically though as those ships tend to come closer and closer you're going to want to swap 
these crystals out. And that's another advantage which I forgot to bring up. When you change the ammunition type in a, an energy weapon, it's, in, it's instantaneous because you're just loading one crystal. Yeah, you're not loading round after round after round. So that's the other nice thing. You can easily switch these crystals uh, as the situation changes, which gives a lot of uh, dynamic um, considerations for the Amar pilot, which you know, they don't just put in what type of ammunition and call it a day. No, they have to change their ammunition and know their ammunition uh, as the circumstances change. So for radio, very long distance, uh, as, and usually a good ammunition you want to start off with because you tend to be top up with capacitor. Okay, so next one, let's go with microwave. Microwave, now now we have a 40% increase in range, so that's a 20% decrease against radio, uh, against radio, but now you have a better um, efficiency with your capacitor. This is a nice normal overall damage. You also get 8 EM and 4 thermal. And so now you're bringing that thermal component. It's not a lot, but again, this is good for, for PV, PVP at a, at a longer range. I kind of consider this the same as Iridium ammo for uh, hybrid turrets, where it's kind of a good crystal that you can travel around with, you know. You may not want to start off with radio, you can start off with, with microwave, or you don't even want to bring the radio because you don't want that just strict um, EM component or you want a little better capacitor usage, but still have the most of the advantages of the range. So microwave, it's a good it's a good overall ammunition. It's a good traveling ammunition. If you're going from one system to another, you're not exactly sure what you're gonna hit. Uh, having microwave loaded ain't bad, okay? So that is microwave. Okay, going on to the next uh, advantage in range. We have infrared. Okay, so now infrared, now we're down to 20% increase in optimal range so not a lot but still still decent not not bad but now we have a very good 35 percent reduced in capacitor need this is one this is a good ammunition for ships that do not have that minus 50 percent capacitor usage bonus so things like the abaddon and, and ships like that or if they're non amar ships that are bringing energy weapons with them you really want to consider ammunition that has that much lower reduced capacitor cost and infrared is a very good one you get that uh 20 percent increase in, in range which, which ain't too bad and you get that uh minus 35 percent however the the thermal energy damage that you get from the microwave is going to be the same at four but it does increase a little bit for the em now it's up to 10 you get four a little bit higher damage, uh, but uh, good capacitor efficiency, I should say, for, for this ammunition. And that is infrared. And going through the list here, those three ammunitions, radio, microwave, and infrared, are the ammunitions that have increased range and a certain amount of capacitor reduction. Okay, and it kind of scales. Radio with the best range and the lowest capacitor efficiency. Infrared with the lowest range advantage, but with the best capacitor efficiency. And now we're going to, to switch it up here. Next thing we're going to go to is standard. And there's one more I wanted to look at. Okay, so let's go to standard. Standard here, as you can see, has no range advantage. It has two more on the thermal, so that's an event. So that's my thing. But it's going to be a shorter range as you're used to with the uh, ranging enhancing type of ammunition. But look at that capacitor need bonus, minus 45%. That is really, really good. So, again, take what I said from before and just put it even more. This is almost the same as having just a standard energy turret with that minus 50%. Uh, capacitor bonus built into the ammunition okay so again very good for ships like the Abaddon and others that do not have that bonus and can really find themselves in a spot where they can eat through their capacitor very very quickly uh, another thing is, is is if you're going into deeper deeper combat and you're using your repair you're using uh, remote 
uh, modules and things of like that, and that's also eating into your capacity, capacitor, and, but you still want to keep firing, this is a very good one. This is the most energy efficient uh, ammunition that you can use that you can still fire and not use up your capacitor. So it's the most capacitor efficient ammunition uh, that's available. Now let's go on from that. So that's your kind of your standard one that, uh, again, it even says in the name, standard, <laughs> that you can put in and not worry about your capacitor too much. If you're running standard ammunition and you still have capacitor problems, then you probably want to start, stop firing at that point. All right, so next up. Now, all the ammunition I'm gonna talk about from here on out are gonna have range penalties. But as the range penalty and also capacitor usage uh, varies, you should also see an increase in damage. So these are your close range type of crystals that you want to you know, kind of do close range work and do a lot of damage and finish off your opponent. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's start off with ultraviolet. So ultraviolet here, a little bit higher on the uh, on the uh, thermal. Now we're at six, uh, but the EM is at twelve. So definitely an EM weighted ammunition. Okay, minus twelve. 0.5% on the range, not too bad. Uh, for pulse lasers, uh, they're not gonna feel it too badly. Again, for beam lasers, that ain't too bad either as long as you're within minimum range. But very good minus 35% on the capacitor E bonus. So kind of the same idea as the standard ammunition, but this pumps out a bit more damage at a cost of a little bit of capacitor efficiency and a little bit of range, okay? But overall, yes, you're gonna feel it, but not too much. So an ultraviolet, this is also a good just standard ammunition, if, particularly if you're carrying uh, pulse lasers, uh, that you can travel with. You know, pop this in here, you can start off an engagement. If it starts off at close range, this is not a bad uh, piece of ammunition to have in your turrets. Okay, so next up is X-ray, the green ammunition. Okay, so X-ray. Capacitor need bonus, minus 25%, not bad. Range bonus now also minus 25%. Now you're gonna feel it at that point, okay? And the Marships typically, with few exceptions, such as the Apocalypse, don't have range enhancement bonuses. So the criteria that you see with Kaldari ships uh, don't apply here, okay? Where you can use your uh, ship advantage to offset the ammunition advantage. So here, yes, you're going to, um, use up a little bit more capacitor, although you are still getting 25% benefit, not bad. Uh, but you're gonna start to feel in the range. But again, you're trading off that with two more thermal. So you still get that 12 EM weighted, but now thermal's starting to catch up. Again, a good overall ammunition, but now that 25% range reduction is gonna start to sting. So uh, keep that in mind. All right, so next up, we're gonna talk about gamma. So Gamma is the second most damaging ammunition. Now we're at eight, we have two more EM. So now the EM's getting pushed up again. Capacitor need bonus, now it's minus 15. It's a help, it, it does help, but now you're almost at full blown capacitor usage. Okay, this is gonna burn through your capacitor rather quickly. And that minus 37.5%, you are definitely gonna feel it now. If you didn't feel it before, you're definitely gonna feel it now. So. Very good for uh, beam lasers that are close range that need to get some damage in and pulse, la pulse lasers that can come to near point blank range. Now you're face to face, you're gonna really crank out uh, that damage, but you still don't want to eat through your capacitor all at once. But this is usually an ammunition that you have and you have support to go along with it. Or you have that 50% uh, capacitor usage bonus. Last but not least, of course, what everyone kind of goes with, this is the antimatter of energy turrets, and that is multi-frequency. Straight up, minus 50% range bonus. This is a, essentially a point-blank ammunition, same as antimatter for, um, for hybrid turrets. 14 EM and now 10 thermal. So really, one thing to keep in mind here if you want to maximize your EM damage, you don't have to go to multi-frequency. You can go back the last two last two damages, either to ultraviolet or uh, I believe X-ray. You know those are doing the same amount of 
EM damage, if that's the one you want to concentrate on. If you have a particular rat that is weak to EM damage, or you have a particular structure that is weak to EM damage, you don't have to go to multi-frequency. <laughs> I think a lot of people just have to just drop this in, does the most damage, put in there. Yes, it does, okay, and, uh, and on the whole probably does more damage, but is nowhere near as efficient with your capacitor as uh, the other two damage types. But PvP, every Mara player carries multi-frequency in PvP. This is the get up close and melt their face ammunition. This is by far the most damaging, but your capacitor will disappear. This is where either you have support or you have uh, very good uh, energy management, where you're not running too many modules at once, or you got a whole load of energy boosters ready to go. This is very, very typical in PvP, which is short, fast, and violent. You want to get as much damage as possible, multi-frequency, is your tech one ammunition and so those are all eight ammunition types again there's a range and also a range in damage types so when you go to select your ammunition and think okay what range are going to be fighting at how important is capacitor to me you know am i running a whole bunch of modules such as you know afterburners micro warp drive uh, armor repair and firing my guns well then you probably want to have something that's more capacitor efficient or if you have support or you need to really do as much damage as possible, then you want your more damaging ammunition. Okay, so to leave off here, we're gonna just cover the two Tech 2 types of ammunition. Again, going to medium, there are two specific types for beam lasers and two specific types for pulse lasers. So they're not interchangeable, so keep that in mind. And typically there is one that really enhances the aspect of that particular weapon system at a, at a cost, and there's also one that goes completely opposite direction. It kind of kind of sacrifices everything for the name of damage. Okay. So starting off with for for your beam lasers, you have the Aurora. This is the sniping ammunition. It has an 80% optimal range, but it's, you're going to have a very big penalty to your tracker speed. So this is your long range sniper ammunition, you know, using ships such as the Apocalypse or you're fighting at 80 kilometers or more where tracking really doesn't matter here you go it does pretty good damage you know it's got 10 em and uh, 6 thermal that's just which ain't bad but the moment the ships start to come with even within medium range you will not be able to track them anymore and you got to get this ammunition out also the other thing about technical am ammunition is that they will degrade so you'll need spare crystals in your car level you probably don't need a lot but they will degrade over time so keep that in mind if you're going to be doing siege work Next, we have Gleam. Gleam throws everything out of the window uh, for one advantage, and that is your tracking speed. So let's say an, an enemy does get within close range to you, and you're armed with beam lasers. They're using your lack of turret trans transversal against you. Here's a piece of ammunition that can help. It is going to be a whopping mi minus 75% in range, but you're going to get a 25% bonus in tracking. You also an equalized damage so 14 em and 14 thermal it is definitely going to hurt whatever it's shooting at so gleam if you're running uh, again something like an apocalypse and you have all tech 2 turrets pack some gleam uh, it could it could save your ship if things get within medium range and all you have left is your drone bay if they come in closer than that this can definitely occasionally really hit and when they hit they can hit really really hard okay so pack some gleam uh, because it is the only ammunition for beam lasers that increase turret transversal now lastly on to pulse lasers we have conflagration and scorch so conflagration so tracking speed, minus 30% tracking speed. Capacitoring, now an increase in capacitor Nemo's 25%. 50% uh, minus range. What, who in the heck is going to carry this thing? But look at that damage. 17.7, 17.7 across the board. This is the most damaging ammunition available to energy turret users. Okay, conflagration. Conflagration will melt, destroy anything. As long as it isn't moving. <laughs> very good for for taking down structures rather quickly um, or if you have a target that's larger than you so if you're in a cruiser and you're right up against the nose of a battleship normally the battleship's defenses are going to be able to shrug off one or two cruisers okay 
load this ammunition and it might, it may or well might, just break through a battleship's defenses. So this is the type of ammunition when you're fighting one class above your current uh, ship class. Last but not least, we have Scorch. Scorch, also that 25% uh, tracking speed penalty, it hurts, but you get a 40% range, okay? Heavily weighted towards EM. Not much thermal damage at four, okay? So this one allows short range pulse lasers, which are quite damaging, to reach out 40% further. So this one is very good at doing mid-range work or even just touching along long-range work. This one can surprise uh, a lot of ships when pulse lasers start reaching out to a very long range that they're typically not expecting. That is because of Scorch. You do pay for it though, again, with tracking, but pulse lasers tend to have very good tracking to begin with. But anything that comes within, you know, closer to mid-range, you want to get this ammunition out of there. It's done its job. You probably did quite a bit of damage to it, a lot of EM damage. You probably shredded their shields, but at that point, you want to kick this out, okay? And either switch to standard ammunition or probably a standard ammunition because you want your standard uh, tracking speed uh, that can go in there. Because remember, the beam laser tech 2 that has the uh, advantage in tracking ring or tracking speed cannot be put into pulse lasers. So for pulse lasers, uh, if you want normalized tracking, you gotta go back to a standard ammunition crystal. So anyways, uh, that is my overview for energy crystals, frequency crystals for Amara ships. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is a companion to the one I did earlier for hybrid ammunition. And next time I will do one for projectile ammunition. And then after that, I may do one for missiles and, and drones and things like that. So anyways, feel free to let me know what you think. I hope this really helped you out, particularly for you Amar pilots. You're, you know, you're fighting the good fight, bringing heathens to bear or roasting them down. Now you can do it with style. Okay, thank you very much everyone. I will talk to you soon and take care.